This is an LED. It takes uh, it just takes power on the two pins. Uh, this is a little battery. This is just a tiny three volt cell. So if you connect these two together, that uh, that's that's a circuit. Every time an electron goes through the LED, then it emits a photon. So you get light. Now the D in so LED stands for light emitting diode, and uh, it's a diode in the sense that uh, if I turn this LED around, it doesn't uh, it doesn't actually work anymore. In other words, the electrons have to be traveling the right direction through the LED for the LED to actually work. That means if you plug an LED in backwards, it doesn't uh, it doesn't work right. Now there are some components where if you plug them in backwards, they don't work, and then they never work again. There's a couple of ways to tell which side is negative. One way is just try both ways. If it glows, you get it the right way. Uh, th there's th there's a slightly more reliable approach. If uh, if there are pins, usually the shorter pin is the negative. There's usually some sort of material inside there that you can kind of see. The bigger chunk is usually negative, not a 100% reliable. So I, honestly, what the heck makes this work? I mean, this is this is sort of this is a pretty mysterious thing that we we take for granted. That yeah, sure, LEDs glow because electricity. An electric circuit flows in a closed cycle, uh, so that's what makes it a circuit. If you open the circuit, get rid of part of it. I mean, current can't flow until you close it again. Literally nothing happens, the light turns off. And you can, you can open either side, top or bottom. And uh, until there's a connection, there's, there's no current and nothing's flowing. So surprisingly, there are a ton of circuits that just basically involve wires making contact or not. So for example, if we want to make a light switch, one easy way to do this is to make the wires make contact when we want light and open the circuit, in other words, at, at a gap, and uh, no electrons are going to flow. It, here I have a little tiny motor. I, I have a 9 volt battery. So this works the same exact way. So if I complete the circuit, then the, the motor spins. So you can see here it's spinning in, in one direction. C cool part about a, a brush DC motor like this, if I send current through the opposite direction, uh, like a diode doesn't work the, the other way around, uh, th this kind of motor actually just spins the opposite direction. It, uh, it spins one way if you send, uh, send electrons through in one direction, and it just spins the other direction if you, uh, if you spin it the, the other way. I care about this because, for example, our mining robot is powered by electricity. It's got onboard batteries. And being able to reverse the direction of the drive motors makes it really handy for being able to drive around. Uh, here we have our little mining head where we can use the same motors to deploy the mining head and to remove the mining head back from, uh, from in the ground. It's super easy to accidentally have an open circuit where the, the motors are not connected anymore and they're not actually doing what you tell them to do. This is, uh, this is really bad. Uh, it's also possible to send electricity in directions that you don't want it. Uh, so understanding how an electric circuit works is the key to building complicated electromechanical systems.